Welcome back, everybody, Coast to Coast, This Week in America. After becoming a mother, author Laurel Lorraine Lancer began having panic attacks. She developed agoraphobia and, upon recommendations from a psychiatrist, checked herself into a private mental hospital. Her new book, Just for the Summer, Memoirs from a Mental Health Hospital, describes her experiences during her month-long stay in a mental health hospital in the 1960s. Similar to One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Laurel's story of her 30 days of treatment provides an expose of a pitifully inadequate treatment for mental health issues at that time. Dr. Lancer has earned advanced degrees in higher education and psychology, retired from teaching and counseling. She has two children, always wanted to tell her story. She's also the author of five books, Love is in the Room, for example, A Walk from the Sea and Where Fairies Are, and this book we're talking about in the program today, just for the summer, Dr. Laurel Lorraine Lancer, our guest on This Week in America. Dr. Lancer, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you. This is such an important book. It really takes us back in time, and it's shocking when we go back a few decades and we see how people were treated. And let's start with, with the inspiration, why you decided to write this book. It was a pretty powerful message, as I understood, a messenger that guided you to write this book. Well, I had always, uh, after my hospitalization, I would share uh, stories of uh, things that I thought were kind of humorous that went on in the hospital or things that I thought were a little sad. And I would share with my family and very close friends. And uh, I had always sort of thought, oh, and, and say to people, I should write a book about that. And then uh, one day I was in our, our house of worship and uh, saying a prayer, as we folks usually do, asking for direction. And uh, I actually heard a voice say, write your story. And I thought, oh, yeah, because in our faith, we're told to keep family history and keep a journal. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm not keeping my journal. I never even started it. And then it was a strong message. No, not that. A book about the hospital. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, I, it was a strong it message. A long time. Yeah, it was a very specific mention uh, message as well. And it's all in the book by Dr. Lancer, Laurel Lorraine Lancer, Ph.D., our guest on the program. The book is is just for the summer. You'll find it, of course, at Amazon, linking on to the book directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Well, let's go back to where this all began for you. And I mentioned the panic attacks, which uh, increased and turned into agoraphobia. Talk about that, the concern that you had that led to admitting yourself into a mental health hospital. Well, I, um, I had my second child, and... Uh went into a little bit of postpartum depression, but uh, I started having uh, real anxiety and afraid to be home alone during the day. And, and uh, I had been teaching, and I had some difficulty with that. I started having uh, small panic attacks at, at school, and uh, when I'd have them, I'd step out in the hallway take a couple of deep breaths and go back in, but uh, they got a little stronger, and one day uh, it was so bad I was in tears, and I went down to the principal's office and told him I'd have to quit teaching, and the psychiatrist that I was seeing at that time for my anxiety told my husband she'll never teach again, but I went back uh, a couple of years later and taught for 42 years. I was going to say, that was a, a long, illustrious career, 42 years that I, that I mentioned in the open. When you're confronting all of this back at that time and faced with going into the hospital for 30 days, what were your expectations and did you have any idea what the, the world was that you were about to get into? Oh, no, no. Um, my mother had had a... Um, quote, nervous breakdown when I was a small child, and she talked about going to the hospital, and that, and this is another thing, at that time, they were uh, 
putting people <laughs> with uh, mental problems and emotional problems in big tubs of hot water and then cold water, and they were very deep tubs. She described them when she got back. And I thought that, you know, that's just weird. But uh, I knew that I was going to have insulin shock therapy, but I didn't really know what that was. I knew what electric shock therapy was. I had heard about that. I had one neighbor that had been there, uh, been in a hospital and had electric shock. And uh, I found out later after my hospitalization, I went back to get my master's degree and was working on some uh, classes in psychology and they showed an electric shock treatment. <laughs> of course, I had already seen them in oh, real life. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. And, but I'll tell you, the, the film, uh, I had to get up and leave the class. Well, talk about the types of treatment. You've mentioned in general terms. Talk about that. And, and, and for those of us who grew up during that time, we're, we're familiar with the, with the terms but had no idea the, the ramifications. Talk about the types of treatment that, that you were subjected to and what you saw other people subjected to. Well, we were in a, a long room that was, uh, there were uh, cots lined up and curtains between each each cot, and uh, uh, then um, there was one room where there were just cots around, and they were all laying on cots, and and uh, I was in that room when I uh, observed the treatments. One of the nurses said, oh, wait, wait, uh, Laurel's awake. Uh, she's watching. <laughs> and they had... Some of, some of the patients were tied down because when they were having the insulin therapy, they would go through weird gyrations. I never knew what caused that. And uh, the electric shock was uh, a medical um, professional would come and, and uh, put a, a box near them and give them an electric shock and they'd go into seizure. And the seizures were kind of scary to watch, and and uh, the insulin therapy was even worse with weird gyrations. This one woman would uh, raise up, and it was a rhythmic thing she was doing, and her tongue would come out, and then she'd pull her tongue back in and lay back down, and then she'd raise up again. It was really very frightening. With us on the program is uh, Lorraine, uh, Laurel Lorraine Lancer, Ph.D., author of the book Just for the Summer, talking about her experiences specifically during this 30-day stay. Talk about some of the other people who were there. What, what issues were they dealing with? There were uh, a lot of, of different, uh, uh, what would I say, medical uh, aberrations or uh, there was one that definitely, when I, you know, when I knew about different diagnoses after I'd been hospitalized, I realized what some of them were. There was severe depression uh, with a number of patients. One woman had had um, her her little uh, toddler was was dying of pneumonia, and uh, they had told her that they couldn't do anything for her, and so she was uh, making weird noises and choking and unable to catch her breath and uh, the mother got frightened and threw a blanket over her and and ran to the police station and turned herself in said I killed my baby and this was all over the newspaper so the paparazzi were around her house and her psychiatrist put her in the hospital to keep her away from that situation so and there was another woman who uh, I had lost a, a child, and she would go out to the cemetery every day and uh, was obsessed with just going to the cemetery. And uh, her uh, husband and, and doctor put her in. Uh, there was another one that, you know, I, I didn't know what I w- would have called it at the time, but later I realized that she had... Um, uh, schizophrenia really really bad she was a paranoid schizophrenic and her she was angry her father had broken up her relationship that 
she thought she was madly in love with this this guy and she was real obsessed with strange things she thought he was doing and she um, put meanings on uh, the fact that he wore a brown suit and that the flowers that were sent to her were red and she was real obsessed with and she'd say to me you know it's red and you know what that means <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she she was uh, they had an um, annex there, and after uh, your treatments, you would usually be sent to the annex for a couple days until you were sent home. And she had gotten to the annex and was about ready to go home, and I went up to her room to get her to, to go to uh, dinner, and she was pulling all of her clothing out of her closet and ripping it up with a razor blade and of course I got a hold of the nurse and, and uh, she called the main building and they came and took her back and I assume started treatments all over again I don't know but uh, she was pretty sad and I had a roommate that uh, was obsessed with the fact that her husband had been bitten by a stray cat and she was afraid he was going to die this horrible death from rabies so she was obsessed about the date and every day she would ask me what day is this what's the date today and she finally told me her story and what she had done was told her husband let's let's go out for the evening and uh, they went to a movie and to dinner and then uh, she got in the glove compartment and pulled out a gun pointed it at him and she was going to kill him so that he would not suffer rabies death and I guess she just couldn't shoot him <laughs> you know her telling me that she had intended to yes it was kind of frightening to uh, be a roommate <laughs> how do you how did you handle all of that all of this going on around you and then the uh, the electroshock therapy the the insulin shock therapy how did you handle all of that during the 30-day period I think with, uh, I was really very kind to most of the patients. There were some that were annoying, and I'm kind of a smart aleck, and I <laughs> handled a lot with humor and, and uh, kind of uh, smart-ass remarks yes. to people. And I, I was kind of a troublemaker. I, I uh, facilitated two people. Uh, women patients, I, I help them run away, get out of the hospital. <laughs> well, I was going to say, in reading, you were not really a passive patient, were you? You were very uh, aggressive at times in expressing yourself, and, and in this case, helping other people. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was uh, really kind of flippant and um, the night nurse, uh, when she came on, uh, we'd all be in in the day room, and there weren't enough couches and chairs there, so people would be sitting on the floor, and she was going around to each patient and taking their blood pressure and and their um, pulse and uh, and talking to them a little bit. And she came over, and she was working her way around the room, and. She came to me and she took my blood pressure and my uh, pulse and then she said, did you have a bowel movement today? And I said, why yes, did you? <laughs> so excitedly and, and she looked at me kind of funny and she said, well, you know, I have to ask this because, and she started to explain and I let my face just fall and I said, oh, I thought you were trying to start a conversation. <laughs> She said, oh, that's how it is. So when I need an enema, you guess who's going to get it. And I think she, because she thought I was, that was kind of funny, she, she started coming to my room after she did her rounds, and she would come regularly uh, in and, and just sit and talk, and we'd talk about uh, the patients and uh, what had gone on in the hospital for the day. And one day she said to me, um, I've figured out what's, everybody's problem here but I don't I don't see what's wrong with you what what is 
is your problem? And I said, oh, I really don't have one. I just come for the summers. And that's <laughs> the title of my book. Just, just the, the, the name of the book, Just for the Summer. And, uh, boy, time is going by so quickly. The book is Just for the Summer, Memoirs from a Mental Health Hospital. Uh, the author, our guest, uh, Laurel Lorraine Lancer, Ph.D. The book, once again, Just for the Summer. Books available at barnesandnoble.com, for example. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to the Barnes & Noble site, get information on the book, and purchase that there as well. Several things come to mind as, as, as we're talking here. When you left at the end of 30 days, were you better, more stable than you were when you went in at the beginning? Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm asking, I did it help? I, had, I was told I had to go home. We lived in uh, a suburb of the city uh, where the hospital was, and it was about a, oh, maybe a 40-minute drive home. And uh, I was told I had to make it home twice uh, before he would release me. So we went the first uh, time my husband was going to take me home and when we got to the two major intersections at the very center of Denver I started to get very anxious and I started to cry and uh, insisted that he take me back you know and so when he the doctor said did you make it home I said no and I, he said what happened I said well when we got to it I named the intersection he said what the hell did your husband <laughs> take you there for? He said, I told him to circumvent the downtown area. So uh, I, many years later, I realized that a lot of things were kind of provoked. Uh, you know, I was being provoked to, to get upset with things that my husband knew would upset me. And you're very honest but, uh, in the book, talking about the, uh, the the poor marriage with your ex-husband, I will point out, Laurel Lorraine Lancer, Ph.D., author of the book Just For the Summer, is our guest on the program. What do you, you've been very honest, and I'm sure it was difficult to write the book in, in some of these areas and go back to the, the painful areas that you recall. What do you hope the reader takes away from reading the book Just For the Summer? I would hope that uh, a lot of people in the mental health field would read it uh, so that they would see the, uh, the uh, lack of uh, sensitivity toward people with mental problems. And also, I, it could be very instructional in, in helping them see different, different forms of uh, uh, mental illness uh, from what I saw in, in the hospital and tried to relate and make, a, a, you know, kind of a, a story about uh, each patient that I had come in close contact with. There were some very obnoxious ladies who, uh, one of them even picked up a card table in their uh, bedroom. There were four of them in one large room and all of them had uh, lawsuits going uh, against the, I don't know, probably the doctor, but they had a lawyer trying to get them out. This was a locked hospital. The wards were all locked, and um, I hope two of the patients escaped, and that was a little bit of... <laughs> 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 I, I think they didn't like me very well for that. Well, oh, I'm, I'm sure of that. I mean, all of these stories you'll find in, in the book just for the summer... Uh, a few minutes left. What was this, the, writing the book, what was this process like for you? Did you maybe better understand what you were going through with the, the wisdom of the degree in psychology in and, and several decades? Yes, I did. Like I said, when they showed the film about oh, yes. electroshock therapy, I couldn't stay there for it. But, you know, to have personal experience like that... Uh, when I went back to teaching, I taught regular classroom uh, for uh, about three years, and then I uh, took the first class that they'd ever had in our school district. It was a rather large school district with three high schools, but I took the first emotionally disturbed classroom in the elementary school, and I had nine 
nine disturbed little boys, and I taught the mostly disturbed uh, children for five years, and then I decided that was enough of that, and I had taken classes in uh, learning disabilities, so I was working with the dyslexic students then for most of the rest of my career. With us on the program, Laurel Lorraine Lancer, Ph.D. The book is Just for the Summer. The book available at barnesandnoble.com. You'll find it at the usual places. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to get information on the book and order that as well. I'm going to take 30, 60 seconds here at the end. If somebody is listening and going, why would I seek help? Because I, the treatment sounds brutal. It dramatically has changed over the years, hasn't it? Well, you know... Or has it? really alerted to the terrible treatment when they came out with um, the snake pit and uh, realized that it seems that what uh, the mental health people have been trying to do for numbers of years is to shock people out of uh, their (laughs) uh, the way they're functioning at the time, and that's what they did with the snake pit. And then one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yes. I think they were doing uh, electroshock in that book. They are no longer doing the insulin shock therapy. The insulin shock therapy uh, involved um, them shooting you in the buttocks with a a dosage of insulin, and then uh, when you, you gradually fell asleep, the patients all thought they were just falling asleep. Uh, the house doctor said to me, why are you frightened? He said, the other patients aren't frightened. And I said, they don't know what's happening to them. Yes. And he said, well, what do you think is happening? And I said, I know what's happening. You shoot me with the insulin, and when the insulin gets activated in my body, I go into a coma. And after I'm in a coma a certain period of time, you put a hose down my nose and put some glucose into my stomach. And I said, if if you don't do it at the right time, I probably would be a goner. And he said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was okay to be frightened, I guess. They did uh, quit doing the insulin shock because of the danger. There was some incidents of death, but I don't know how high it was. But I certainly worried and thought that could happen to me because I came out of the uh, insulin therapy room and looked at the chart one time and I saw I was getting 450 units of insulin, and the next highest dosage was a six-foot man who looked like a football player, and he was getting 250. So that really frightened me. Boy, that that would. I mean, so many great stories, shocking stories in the book, Just for the Summer, uh, Memoirs from a Mental Health Hospital. The author, our guest, is... Laurel Lorraine Lancer, Ph.D., book available at barnesandnoble.com. Go to our website. You can link on directly to get information on the book. Doctor, it's been a pleasure to have you on the program, a very important book. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. It's been a pleasure to have you on and and listen to your story and share it with our listeners. Thank you very much. Oh, I wanted to tell you one thing. Yes. Uh, we We had a... OT occupational therapy room there and uh, I was was going and one of the ladies asked me you know why are you embroidering and I said you know you have to embroider at least two sets of pillowcases <laughs> before they'll let you go home and it started to run on the OT shop <laughs> and they're worried about all the supplies are going out who's going to pay for all of these so it was uh, once again, you were not a, a passive patient during the uh, during the time there. The book is just for the summer. Laurel Lorraine Lancer, Ph.D., our guest on the program. Again, the book available at barnesandnoble.com. You'll get more information by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. <laughs> 